Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel for this painting tutorial. Today I'm painting Marie Antoinette. This is a condensed version, the full two hour long version, step by step in real time is up on Patreon now available for you guys. If you'd like to join, I'll leave a link below and I'm really excited to show you how to paint this. So let's begin. Okay, so if you guys are ready, let's get started with this painting. Working on a gray background, I just took a little bit of black and white, completely covered the canvas, and made sure it was all dry before beginning. This is a 16 by 20 canvas, but you could do this on any uh, rectangle or even a square, whatever shape you want. Even round canvas would look quite beautiful. I'm using my light ultramarine blue, a bit of titanium white. I'm just using one of my oval mop brushes, but you can use any brush that you want. This is just for blocking in uh, light areas right now between the trees way off in the distance. So I'm just going to start building up the first layers of ripples and highlights and reflections in the water. This stage is always really fun for me. I really enjoy painting water. I don't know what it is about it, but I find it really relaxing. And I'm still using my oval mop brush here and just a little bit of white and blue. I'm going to be using a few different colors for the water. Next color is green gold. And make sure you look below the description in this video for a list of all the colors and brushes and links. Of course, I mentioned at the beginning of this video, Patreon, I have an over two, just over two hour long tutorial. It's my longest tutorial ever. And uh, that's this painting in real time. So step by step, uh, I show you a lot more talk throughout the entire video just about so if you guys want to check that out it's definitely worth your while and worth the ten dollars to get that full tutorial i'm going to come in on the side and fill in the contrast areas here of the water so i'm using black green gold maybe a bit of sap green just any dark deep green you have uh, hooker's green works well um, and if you don't have a dark green, you can actually take black with yellow, any yellow. You'll get a different hue from doing that, but you'll get a nice deep earthy green. So that's something to consider if you don't have a dark green that I'm working with today. I'm going to come in and around those light areas of the sky there, peeking through the trees. I'm going to add foliage. I'm going to use a few different colors. I've got light, uh, yellow, warm, neon. That combined with the greens I'm using is going to create a really sunlit, pretty golden effect on the leaves and the, and the foliage. Um, I'm, I'm just adding the light and shadow areas around the grass and around the building and uh, the trees and the bushes. Still using this oval mop brush. If you don't have an oval mop, just use any brush uh, that you can stipple with and create texture and foliage like uh, bushes and trees. So you could use a fan brush, you could use a filbert brush, there's a few different options. Um, of course any stipple brush or mop brush will work as well. And I'm just going to do the lines on either side, so just make it a rectangle very simply here for the building. One line here and one line here. And the building is mainly going to be a uh, light blue violet and white and a little bit of that gray in there as well. I'm going to come in and just start adding some simple uh, lines for the tree trunk, branches, more foliage around the edges. Um, but the building will be also in uh, neon orange and white. I'm using Holbein Luminous Neon Acrylics. Uh, I may leave a link below, but they've been sold out for and out of stock for quite some time, but you can find them at certain fine art stores. Uh, keep in mind, Michaels does not carry them. I really hope that they do soon um, because they can be hard to find. Uh, they sell out quickly and they're a beautiful, beautiful neon choice to use. I'm going to build up more highlights and shadows and ripples in the water. Um, the colors I'm going to be using today are more muted and uh, a little bit darker than what I normally use, uh, especially for my fantasy paintings. You guys are, are used to seeing me use a lot of my neons and pastel and pretty colors, blues and purples and roses. Um, but today I really want to stay true to the scene in the movie that I love 
and uh, a few of the reference photos that I used for this. I will do my own twist uh, uh, with it, of course, because I can't help it. It's really hard for me to follow a reference photo nowadays anyways, and I like to um, kind of just do my own thing with uh, whatever I'm painting. It's way more fun that way, and it keeps me true to myself as an artist. So I'll be enhancing the colors slightly, with, especially with the turquoise, um, but I'm going to be using some red. I've got a uh, crimson red I'll be using. Um, like I said earlier, I've got sap green, green gold. I mentioned all the colors at the beginning, but I, I might be adding a few here along the way. Um, but make sure you look below the video in the description. If you click on the bottom of the video, um, it'll pop up for you. So you'll see links there to the Facebook group. Um, Pinterest, Instagram, other tutorials you might like, my Patreon of course, and uh, the list of colors and brushes in the canvas. So I'm just going to come in and start adding more shadows under the boat and really making the boat start to look 3D by doing this. So if I have a dark dark line right underneath the boat, the boat will look like it's uh, a 3D image and or an object and kind of just give you that feeling that it's popping off the canvas. So I'm using my blue, my light ultramarine blue or light blue violet for the front of the boat with my flat brush. A little bit of white, I'm going to cut right underneath that line on the top of the boat that I used um, crimson red and black for. And I'm going to do little lines to separate these boards. I'm not going to use straight black for that. And then I'm going to add a really nice beautiful bright highlight uh, and for all my bright, bright highlights today, I'll be using titanium white uh, with neon orange and a hint of neon yellow warm. Now the turquoise that I added there is not part of the reference photo, but that's kind of my, my thing. I like to use turquoise for some cool shadows in landscapes, so I thought that was pretty and I added that. And then there's a little rock uh, wall separating um, the, the lake from the hill side up there. So that's just little dots and dabs uh, with any tinted white that you want to use. And I just did that with the corner of my flat brush, but of you can obviously use any brush for that. It's really simple. A round brush, liner brush, a small filbert would work. And I'm just going to come in over top of this light blue violet that I added on the building first. And I didn't do it solid. You can see I've, I've left some gray uh, undertones there. And I'm coming in with a clean brush, my beautiful neon orange by Holbein, and some white. And these two colors are complementary together. And I'm not gonna, I'm gonna do this very loosely, impressionistic, patchy, because it is in the distance, so it's gonna be somewhat blurry. We don't want to see every single detail on that. It's far away for one, and we want it to be sort of out of focus and blurry. That will help put everything in perspective better that we want to, uh, we want our eyes to focus on. And that, of course, is Marie Antoinette in the boat with all those beautiful ripples and highlights, shadows in the water. I'm going to use my flat brush with some black. I'm When I pick up my black, I've always got another color in my brush. And if not, I'm not using straight black. I'm going to be using a little bit of uh, red and blue and mixing that in with my black to get a really rich, beautiful, um, dark tone for my uh, uh, where I want it to be the darkest and have the darkest shadows and contrast.
working on some more highlights and shadows pretty much all over the painting. Uh, I'm going to start building up some more ripples in the water, adding more colors. So whatever color I've got going on around the boat area in Marie Antoinette's uh, dress, her skin tone, her hat, all of that, I'm going to reflect little hints of that in the ripples below in the water reflecting. So just keep that in mind. It's something really uh, good to think about. You don't want to forget that. And less is more. You don't have to go overboard with the reflections in the water. There is... Um, it's pretty calm water, but there's a lot of ripples there, so uh, you're gonna leave. You're gonna kind of leave spaces in between. Um, so wherever you have, uh, right here, adding a little bit of the red, and I kind of zigzag sometimes, but make um, less edgy and more rounded and flowy zigzags, if that makes sense. And that way, you're leaving those spaces in between. So that alone just creates those ripples instantly by doing that. It's really easy, and it's it's a fun brush stroke to make. It's very loose. Uh, I'm going to add a little bit, or I have added a little bit of that uh, warm red and black on the right corner of the boat. This is the beginning stages of the blanket that's going to hang over either side of the boat. They're going to come down into a pointy V um, and then have a tassel hanging down from either side. I'm using my little uh, uh, round brush. I'm also using a filbert brush, small brushes, any small brush that you feel comfortable with using and that you have. And here, just a little bit of my cadmium yellow with some turquoise, a little bit of white. This is gonna be from the highlights and the color in her dress. So she's got a beautiful puffy gown, which is very normal for that period of time. And that's why this was a lot of fun to paint too. I just love the dresses and the style back then. It's gonna be striped and for the stripes, I'm gonna be using um, ultramarine blue, turquoise and a little bit of white. Now here you can see I'm making that dark rich tone with the red and the blue and the black. And that looks also really, really complimentary with the green in this painting. So that's a nice thing to think about doing, creating complimentary colors with your highlights and your shadows. I almost always tint my white and uh, darken or richen up my black. So if that makes sense, you're never using just straight white or straight black unless you want full on black and white contrast. Um, but I, I don't, I rarely do that. I usually have a grayscale painting, so I'll have lots of gray tones in between. Um, but yeah, your paintings will go from a five to a 10 really quickly if you learn how to tint your whites and your blacks with different colors it's just going to bring your painting to life and add so much to it so i'm going to add a few more branches here on the tree a little bit of foliage again just using going back and forth from a small small filbert and a round brush Well, the color of the blanket is this sat it's satiny and it's peach it's like a fuzzy peach color and it really glows and pops out i'm using neon orange for this and white i may add and you can it's optional a little bit of neon uh, yellow warm both colors any any neon paints that i ever use they're always going to be the holbein luminous neon acrylics and then for the folds and the shadows in this blanket and the pillow above that we'll be doing in just in really shortly, I'm going to be using blue, white, and a little bit of gray.
it kind of just looks like a triangle of the that part of the pillow um, so just keep that in mind when you're working on things that may intimidate you in a painting approach it as breaking it down into shapes light shadow and color I've just taken my bright highlight colors the white and the orange tapped around for the side of her hair that the sun is really hitting so it's super super bright these are going to be the brightest highlights in the entire painting the top of her hat which is full of flowers and feathers very fun to paint and I'm going to come around the edge and start building up the shape and uh, subtle details on the hat again nothing is in um, uh, too much super detail about this painting um, especially the background try to not spend too much time on the background keep it a little bit a looser almost messier looking I know it's hard to hear that you don't want to approach your paintings thinking that you're making a mess out of it but sometimes uh, less is more just kind of one or two brush strokes um, you just don't want to paint too tightly for the background um, in this painting anyways unless you want your focus to be the background and you can keep the foreground blurrier some sometimes you can do that um, but in this case, I really just want to keep my tighter brush strokes and uh, take a little bit more time on the foreground. Now, it's uh, I don't paint a lot of portraits. It's not really my forte. I'm not terribly <laughs> good at it. But with this one, it was uh, a little bit easier to approach, mostly because her face is in shadow. And we're not working on a close-up of her face, so you can get away with little imperfections. All we're out here, all we're out to achieve here is just an impression and know that it's a lady in a boat so don't spend too much time on any one feature on her face guys it's how we see the painting as a whole and how it all comes together and flows So for the colors on the hat, her flowers and feathers, I'll be using a little bit of turquoise. I'll be using light ultramarine blue. If you don't have light ultramarine blue or light blue violet, they're the same thing. Just take either cobalt blue or ultramarine blue. Mix it with um, my first choice and recommendation would be titanium white. It's the brightest, whitest white and uh, a cool white. So it makes a very lovely light ultramarine blue. But if you don't have titanium white, any other white will work just fine. I'm going to be adding more to her arm. A little, I'll be building up the highlights all around using those same bright colors for my highlights. The white, the neon orange, neon yellow warm. And working on reflections in the water again. Remember, whatever you've got going on above, you want to add a little touch of that down in the water. And all you have to do are little squiggly lines, little rounded ripples. And I'm going to build up the, the skin on her arm now, making it brighter where the sun will start to be hitting it. It's not going to be in full uh, highlight like the hair and her dress and the edge of her blanket there. But it's going to be brighter than what it is here. And just by adding a, a bit of this to her face in certain areas, I'll make her cheekbones, her chin, her nose uh, start to stand out. And this is the beginning 
easy, easy stages of building up her face. And I'm coming in with her other arm that's going to be hanging over the edge of the boat, hand dangling and fingers in the water. Same color. And I'll be doing the little reflection down below. Um, so when you're doing a mirrored reflection, the reflections go the opposite way. Uh, so this is just going to be a little bit of that. It's her hand, how we see it hanging over the boat, is kind of turning slightly to the left. So of course the reflection in the water will be slightly turning to the right. But like I said, just a little bit. And then the dress is see-through, so th that's what I really liked about painting this too. I loved creating that see-through look and it was so easy, but it can be a little bit intimidating after you've painted something like her arm here. It may seem a little bit scary and wrong to go right over top and start painting the, the stripes and the pattern on her dress, but trust me guys that you just have to break through that fear and just go for it and it's going to be... Uh, you'll you'll surprise yourself so trust me guys and I mentioned in the beginning of this video uh, if you are just turn, tuning in now and you're seeing this part and you didn't hear the beginning I have a full over two hour long step-by-step real-time tutorial for this painting if you are really serious about learning how to paint this uh, in real time, then I'll leave a link below for Patreon, okay? You get early access on Patreon, um, extra content, monthly giveaways, and some longer videos. Plus, you're really helping me afford to do this full time, so I appreciate that very much, and thanks in advance, everybody. So I'm just starting to work on the stripes and the pattern of her dress, keeping it very thin and almost kind of see-through looking, well, especially on her sleeve. But well, obviously we don't want her dress see-through, but I want to have those gray undertones from that underpainting. Um, so blue, turquoise, white, with either a filbert, a liner, or a round. And then you can see this interesting brush I'm using now. This is called the Rake brush. It's a rake fan brush and what it does is uh, helps to create a pattern really quickly one stroke. So if you're working on hair, fur, grass, palm leaves, um, wood grain, um, or a dress like this with lots of stripes and folds and lines in it, this is the brush for you. You can also, and I will be using my, I have a filbert rake brush as well. I got these at Michael's and they're they're royal and laying nickel. They're not expensive. Uh, they're really uh, handy little brushes. So um, I'll try to leave a link below if I can find one on Amazon for you guys. But I'm going to come in and start working on this side of the blanket. It's got that tassel there on the bottom, a little bit of black, and then white, tinted white for the little beads. Um, you can kind of make them look like they're shiny gold or silver by just adding uh, tints of yellow or yellow ochre. Uh, to your white 
So I'm going to add a few little stripes in here, little lines, muted tones, and a lot of shadow, some more black uh, with blue or red in between her blanket and her arm. And then I'm going to slowly start coming in here with the shadows and building up subtle indications for her eyes, the nostrils, and her lips. And before I finish her face, I'm going to go around and add more highlights and shadows everywhere. And another tassel on the pillow hanging down here. Again, just a couple little dots of white and then black for the tassel itself. Working on the reflections down below again. And I switched over to my tiny little one inch liner brush just to create those little wispy looking feathers and the top of the hat where we've got that nice bright bright highlight again neon orange neon yellow warm with titanium white no water So for the features on her face, I'm just keeping it really subdued, dull, just a little bit of dark gray, and then a little bit of neon red, neon orange maybe, um, with white for a peachy glow on her face. And less is more for the face, don't try to overwork it, we're not that close to her face, and like I said, it's in shadow, and it's just about creating the suggestion. So little tiny brush strokes 
thin lips. Try to do everything um, smaller than you think you should. Um, that'll that advice alone will take you really far <laughs> with um, the features on a face. So uh, that's the biggest biggest mistake. I don't know a ton about portraiture. I'm not a portrait artist, um, but that's one of the biggest mistakes that I've heard artists make is they when they're beginning portraits they start out making everything too big and I know this from experience because I've done that myself um, but I'm just gonna add little bits of highlights here and there shadows around her face and this one will be done and I want to thank you guys so much for tuning in today and watching this I hope that you enjoyed it and I'll see you all soon in my next video. Have a wonderful day, guys, and happy painting. Don't forget to like this video, leave a comment below, and subscribe to my channel for more. Bye!